Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing another recommendations video for my 8 That Are Great mini series and for this one it's going to be 20th century historical fiction. So like the subtitle suggests this is historical fiction that is set in the 20th century, so something in the 1900s. I have 8 books today that I thought were all pretty great and I'm just going to recommend them to you. The first book I have to talk about I read before starting my channel and that is Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. This was quite popular when it first came out but I don't see many people talking about it anymore because it has been a while since it was published published but I think this is a really lovely example of a historical fiction. It's set in the 1920s in America and it specifically follows um, a travelling circus who used the trains across America to travel which was a very classic thing for circuses at the time and in the 1920s it is in prohibition where alcohol has been made illegal and it really is about sort of a love triangle, sort of an abusive relationship and sort of a um, young gentleman who is in his like late teens potentially early 20s running away from home after a traumatic event and really trying to find himself with the circus. I think it's absolutely stunning and the descriptions of the circus on the road are just really really lovely and atmospheric and lyrical and beautiful and I do really like the movie of which this is obviously the movie cover so I would definitely recommend it if you're a fan of both historical fiction or of like circuses and performance in general. I think it does capture that very well both the like beauty of on the, on the stage or in the ring and then also the kind of grim reality of what it was like to be on the road at the time. On a very similar theme I also have The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. This is also set in I think a combination of Canada and America actually but also in the 1920s and it again kind of covers the idea of circus performance the performing arts theatre. It's about two orphans who both, um, they grow up together in an orphanage but they both have kind of skills um, that mean that it really endears people to them and then it's about their life splintering off but then coming together and um, sort of a budding romance there but also the way that they cope with the world. One thing I really love about Heather O'Neill's writing is she's really good at make, like finding beauty in both the like grotesque and the sort of mundane. The, these two characters have really quite awful lives, there's poverty, there's um, sexual assault, there's violence in all sorts of different forms but it really is about finding, um, I don't want to say it's glamorising them because it's not but it's sort of finding a, a weird grotesque way of looking at it that makes it kind of okay. I feel like I'm explaining that terribly um, but the, the way that they escape into their art and the way that they escape into their performance is really just stunning and beautiful and I found it deeply enjoyable. I think if you like the night circus this would appeal. The next one I have to talk about is The Glass Ocean by Beatrice Williams and then a few other people it was co-written so I'll have this, the um the, the cover here so hopefully you can see those and they'll be listed down below. I can't remember exactly when this was, I think this was also 1920s but I could be wrong about that but basically this is a historical romance that is following three main um, women characters. There are two who are in the same time period which is in I think the 1920s who are on board a ship that then um, I believe sinks potentially. I read this a little while ago I'm not gonna lie but then there's a modern day um, historical um, a modern day account where the woman is trying to find out about the lives of these two historical people. It really at its heart is a romance and I did find it kind of um, enjoyable in a very light kind of way. I thought that sort of there were some discussions about class. The two historical women come from very very different backgrounds. It's got kind of a titanic-y sort of vibe going on to it and you know the life on the boat was also very glamorous and exciting and I just think that it was a really light-hearted good fun piece of historical romance so if that is your cup of tea I think that this is a really classic example of that genre. The next book I have to recommend is The Night Tiger by Yang Zichu which is set in the 1930s in Malaysia. This is a glorious again really lyrical and atmospheric book that it took me a little while to sink into the writing style but once I'd really kind of fully immersed myself in the world I absolutely adored it. I thought it was such a wonderful um, immersive reading experience. There's all sorts of kind of Malaysian folklore being wrapped up in it with the idea of um, the certain rites that you need to do after somebody has died and connections with kind of the spirit of a tiger. There's a lot happening there as well as there being sort of a just sort of general general controversy um, going on between a couple of the characters um, and potentially being embroiled in some crimes that they weren't expected to. There are a lot of different twists in it that I found really good fun, potentially one or two too many twists that kind of started over egging things a little bit but plot wise I found it really entertaining and again it was a really glorious lovely way of being sort of immersed and again it sort of is riffing off that idea of the, the um, Lonely Hearts Hotel of like making the grotesque seem beautiful in different ways. So I really 
appreciated it and enjoyed it as a reading experience. The next book I have to recommend is Human Acts by Han Kang. This is an account from multiple different perspectives on the uh, Ganju uprising which happened in the 1980s and this was a student uprising and it is various different perspectives looking in on this act and kind of seeing how the ripples of violence can affect people in different ways. It was the kind of thing that really has um, sort of a quiet beauty to it that really um, is very startling and shocking to sort of read. It was something that I've read now a good few years ago. I think I read it before my booktube channel but it's one that I do find myself kind of continually coming back to. Han Kang's writing can be very very visceral. She has a few other books and I've read her other one, The Vegetarian, that I really didn't like and found that it had a lot of body horror and body gore in a way that I just couldn't get on board with. Whereas Human Acts I think because it was putting that kind of body um, body horror into something that was um, sort of based in truth and also sort of connected to a political uprising felt more appropriate in its place but it is something to bear in mind going in that she doesn't shy away from um, potentially gruesome descriptions of actions and of um, events unfolding. It's something that I think I would recommend everybody read and is again it's a nice different, uh, nice is the wrong word, uh, it's a different take on historical fiction looking at something that is more of a contemporary um, historical fiction and also um, an insight into a true event that occurred. Now we're going to start to uh, talk about some that are either more popular or I've read more recently. One of those is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is an absolutely iconic uh, ghost story now that is set in I believe the like very very early 1900s in Britain and it's about a gentleman who goes to this house to try and deal with some of the affairs there but the house is being haunted by the woman in black and it is one of the creepiest most atmospheric horror books i've ever read it's also been turned into a play that is genuinely traumatizing to witness if you're not into horror oh my god that thing was so good and so spooky in equal measure and i really really like the book it's also a really short quick read and it really helps to build that suspense and keep you on the edge of your seat because it's not over laboring the point and it has some really fun interesting ways that it ends and i think that the play and the book end in slightly different ways but both do a really good job with how they do that with keeping the suspense alive so I deeply deeply enjoyed this as a reading experience. The next one I have to talk about I finished relatively recently so you will have seen it on my channel before and that is Pulp by Robin Talley. This is sort of a dual timeline history which um, historical fiction which is following a young girl in the 1950s and then a young girl in modern day learning about the young girl in the 1950s. Um, it, what it is is it's looking at the phenomena of lesbian pulp fiction that was very big in the 1950s and the woman uh, the young girl in the time of the 1950s is discovering it as well as she's discovering her sexuality and is considering writing some and then there is the modern day which is a young girl who is openly gay and is um trying to find out the identity of this author and sort of find out what happened to her as part of the school project but she gets really obsessed with it. It's an interesting look at what it was like to be queer in the 1950s, connections with MacArthurism and all sorts of horrible stuff happening in America at the time and then also looking at modern day of how far we've come but the work that's still left to do. I thought it was really fun and lighthearted in places but obviously really serious in others and it is a YA historical fiction so that's just worth bearing in mind going in with how it particularly approaches certain topics. Because it's a YA it does a lot of talk about like going off to college, concerns of being a teenager which like definitely didn't resonate with me anymore but that's fine because I'm not the target audience for that particular point but if you're an adult reader going into it just bear that in mind so that you're not like annoyed when it comes up. And the final one I have to talk about really doesn't need talking about because so many people have heard about it on booktube but that's The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really like this as a historical fiction. It is kind of set loosely sort of 1950s going forward maybe even slightly earlier and it's following Evelyn, following Evelyn Hugo who is one of the like early examples of um, some of the sort of early movie stars and it's sort of the golden age of cinema and her time and she's had uh, seven husbands across her very scandalous career and it's about her breaking the silence as she's older about why she had these different relationships and these different um, husbands and what it was like to be in movies at the kind of dawn of cinema. It discusses things, so Evelyn Hugo is bi, I don't consider that to be a spoiler, you find it out very early on in the book, and really people's sexuality shouldn't be spoilers, and it's about her trying to hide that because it wasn't okay at the time, or publicly okay at the time, but it also discusses things that she um, has a, I believe Spanish or 
Latin background and she is forced to basically be white passing and it's just generally conversations of like women in film and what they have and haven't been allowed to do historically. Um, it's really good fun and I really enjoyed it. And that is it for me. Those are eight historical fictions set in the 20th century that are pretty darn great. I will eventually be coming out with a few more videos which are on the 19th century and then pre 19th century but I have a few books that I need to read before I can do those. Um, I also didn't mention anything about World War II in this video because I'm going to be doing an entire separate video about books that are either set in or around World War II or about World War II from a non-fiction perspective so that will be coming out soon-ish but I do have a bunch more of these that I want to be doing. Um, like in my previous one if you have any particular genres that you'd like me to try and get to soon feel free to put them down below. I will be prioritising things with a history slant and the run-up to the history challenge but then after that is done I will be doing like branching out into some different genres and I do have some other stuff in there because as people know on this channel I read from a huge variety of different genres so you can guarantee a bunch of different stuff is going to be coming at you soon. Uh, that's pretty much it from me. Have you added any of these to your TBR now? Have you read any of these and what do you think to them? Have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye!